As a YouTube creator and videographer working on both corporate and personal projects, I'm always interested in sites offering either royalty-free music or tracks that can be purchased at a reasonable price and used for commercial productions. Tune Pocket is fairly new on this scene, but before I take a look at their offering, let's talk about what options you have today. If you're on a budget, and by on a budget, I really mean you don't want to pay for anything, then YouTube has a fairly extensive library itself of songs that can be used, and there are plenty of YouTube channels out there that offer free and copyright-free music. The number of tracks available on such channels is growing, but also the number of people using them is also growing. So it's a good option, but it's not without its problems. Firstly, there's a fairly high chance that somebody else has also used the same track on their production. Secondly, composition quality and production quality isn't always top notch. Finally, you're using these for free, so you have no comeback of any kind. Whilst they're offered free today, there's nothing to stop the composer changing this in the future and content ID matching a bunch of your videos further down the line. It's not your music and it's totally out of your control. At the other end of the scale is the higher end production professional quality sites such as BMD Production Music, Audio Network, though admittedly Audio Network have re fairly recently changed their licensing structure and now do recognise the needs of YouTube creators a little more than they used to. No Sheet Music, um, Music Bed, those type of sites, uh, they offer services and they offer music that's available and is usually of a very, very high standard, but it, of course this all comes at a cost. Their composers seem to be very skilled at what they do. They've honed those skills over time and that shows in the quality of the productions. As I say, it isn't cheap. They're really aimed at professional projects where the final production is going to be making plenty of money and where £500, a £500 pound license for a song is just part and parcel of the budget. In between these two are subscription services. And an example of that would be Audioblocks, and in this case, TunePocket. Now, I did a review of Audioblocks some time ago, and I'm not going to say for a second that TunePocket is exactly the same as Audioblocks in every way, because that review of Audioblocks was fairly scathing at certain points, so that would be probably a bit mean on TunePocket. Uh, what I will say, however, is that the business model is basically the same. You pay a subscription and you have access to a library of music that you can use on all of your projects without any worry about copyright issues. In a nutshell, TunePocket is exactly that. The subscriptions offered are simple. If you're an individual creating videos, it will cost you $99 a year. Presumably for me, that would be $99 in British pounds, but with a chunk of standard tax on top. If you're a business, you pay $199. This difference is a license thing. It's not about extra features. Businesses making money, quite rightly, pay more for the products that help make them that money. If you're only after one particular track, they have safemusiclist.com. It's kind of like a sister site, which allows you to download the same from the same music library, but allows you to just purchase the tracks on a track by track basis. So if you're only after a couple of songs and you don't want to sign up for a subscription service, then you can go to safemusiclist.com and get access to the same stuff. Let's go to tunepocket.com and have a look. Okay, so I'm gonna log in here just to show you quickly this is what they're saying pretty simple purchase subscription browse the catalog and download any track and use this is what you can use their music in pretty straightforward and clean looking site nothing too complicated and uh, you can browse music by uh, category mood genre and instrument their support as a fact section licensing agreement and contact us now i'm going to log in as a member and show you what the members page looks like. This is your account page. That's the dashboard, I think. And then we can uh, update our profile on here. Just uh, put some details in there as you would normally. Update our payment info. And then you can flag favorites. So if you're looking for stuff and you don't want to quite download them yet, you can put your favorites in there. Download history. There's a couple of the tracks that I've downloaded and this is the uh, license uh, certificate that you can download for each of the songs. You've got an affiliate area. 
You can join their affiliate program, which means you get a, a certain amount. I'm not absolutely sure what the uh, deal is. Let's have a quick look. And ten dollars for each new client you refer. Okay, so that's pretty good. And that's all there is to it. So let's uh, browse some music and see what I would like to find. So what was I after? Uh, I said that I was after kind of some sim cinematic sort of quiet start, but something cinematic e. Fairly cinematic, I suppose. Um, uh, so what would that come under? So it's a little bit too long, this, I think. A little bit too long. Right, so here we go. Here's what I was talking about before. You can, you've got this scroll. Look, look at the space down the right-hand side. I'll come to this in a bit. Anyway, so let's try and find something. Uh, is it cinematic in here? No, dreamy. Confident, I suppose, would be one. Instrumental, specifically. And uh, feel good, definitely. Let's see, there's only three under that, so let's have a listen to this one. Okay, that's not what I'm after. I'm after something more classical than that. So I suppose genre is what I need to go to. So if I uncheck feel good and let's go to genre and do film score. So cinematic, maybe orchestra. Let's go to that and see. Epic adventure. That looks like it could be something. Okay, too cheesy. Tunepocket.com. Mm, that's annoying. Is a possibility. If it builds at this point, this is this would be a possibility, I think. Eh, maybe a little bit too dramatic there. So we can see from this one that this one builds, so. Tunepocket.com. Let's just look for something uplifting. So when you type in a new search, it resets all the search stuff. That's okay. Instrumental. I want an instrumental and I want it to be. Uh, Film score, I don't know. Film score, let's just do film score and have a look at what these are. Tunepocket.com. Yeah, I think this this sounds okay. As long as it doesn't come in with a, a ukulele. Yeah, that this would have worked. It's uh, unlimited royalty for. Yep. Tunepocket.com. Seems all right too. This would have been appropriate given the scenario. Unlimited royalty. Okay, and maybe over the mountain. Tunepocket.com. That would have been all right, but only uh, I would have preferred a nice sort of quiet beginning. But you can see, I mean, the main point I'm trying to get across there is that with some fairly simple searches, and apart from this search thing being weird down the side, you can easily get to a lot of music that is of a of good quality you know you're not left in the realms of some bizarre stuff uh, fairly quickly and uh, and that's all there is to it that's the, that the site is really really straightforward there's nothing more to it you know you search for your music you find it re you review it you got information about the tracks here which gives you uh, your option to download and when, when you download it's sort of mp3 mp3 and wav it gives you a bit more information about the track the genres and things and the tags i guess that are put on it uh, who composed it i suppose that does this link to them or does it link to their other stuff yeah it links to their other stuff good and uh, and then just download and that's all
Where TunePocket differs from some services is that the library is created by a small selected list of composers. The site is US-based, but composers are worldwide. This list naturally limits choice and reduces the size of the library, but don't be put off by this. Give me this any day rather than other services who have a library of a gazillion songs with only a few gems amongst them that are often impossible to find. Quality over quantity is a big plus as far as I'm concerned. So how's the music? Well, that's a difficult one for me to answer because what it's good for me, might be completely rubbish to you, and vice versa. But really, with these type of things, there is so much available that I have a general rule that if I click on a track, I will know within about five seconds whether or not I'm going to continue listening to it. There's something about that way, the way that track has to be produced, it has to have a certain hook or it has to have a certain feel to it that will grab me and will make me continue listening to it. If not, if that hasn't happened after about five seconds, I tend to just move on to the next one. Now, with that really rather crude test, if I look at a site like Audio Network, it's a pretty high hit rate. A lot of the songs I go to, they might not fit exactly what I'm after, but as far as the actual quality of the track goes, it's really good. Um, something like Audio um, Blocks is probably down in the 5% or lower mark. And to be perfectly honest, a lot of the time, I just end up giving up and going elsewhere to possibly even pay for music that I should maybe be able to get on audio blocks. With Tune Pocket, I'd say it's somewhere in the 50% region. It's not as good as something like Audio Network, but there is certainly plenty of good quality music on there, and I didn't find myself at any time struggling to find what I wanted for a particular need. I really feel that if you sign up for the service, then you know you won't be left looking for music in the future, you will be able to find something to go with your project. And that's really what counts with this sort of situation. Content ID is something that's clearly quite important to TunePocket. It's, I think YouTube creators are really what this service is based around. And they're well aware of the difficulties that YouTube creators have when searching for music to use on their site. And as such, they offer as part of the search facility, facility, if you can actually manage to navigate the search, and I'll come on back onto that in a second, uh, as part of that facility, they offer a filter to, to basically only choose tracks that will not have a content ID match against them. And that's quite unique, really. Um, I haven't seen that on any other sites where they specifically call out the tracks that will not have an ID match against them. It's nice to see, and it's very simple to use. That doesn't mean that you can't use all their other music as well. So let's just be clear around what the two scenarios are. Firstly, no content ID match means YouTube won't even see the track, won't even recognize it. There's no problem at all. You can use it how you want. If you do get a content ID match, then there could be a copyright claim against it. Now, this is not a copyright strike. That's a completely different thing. So a copyright claim will be where YouTube recognizes that someone else owns the copyright to that track. And if you monetize your videos, you may need to share some of that revenue with the copyright holder of the music. And in some cases, you may need to share all the revenue on that video with the copyright holder. Or if you don't monetize your videos, you may get ads put on the video and the copyright holder will gain revenue from that video. However, all the tracks on TunePocket can have this removed. If you want to go back to them and say, actually, I don't want this claim on my video, they can remove the claim and they can also whitelist your channel so that this sort of thing doesn't continue happening in the future. They're not trying to say that these tracks have copyright issues full stop. They're just saying that there are limitations to what they can do around the YouTube ID side of things. They recognize it and they will deal with it. Now, this isn't unique. Audio blocks and other services do exactly the same. What is a little different is the fact that they're so open and transparent about it and that they're clearly keen to engage with people about their YouTube creations and about the fact that they know this is a difficult subject area and that they want people to be able to go to them and say, yes, I don't want the copyright stuff. They just recognize the problem really, and that's nice to see. At this point, I must mention that TunePocket is 
fairly strict on its tagging. It sort of seems to pride itself on the fact that t it tags its songs correctly. And this is a big deal when it comes to these type of sites. So what needs improvement on the site? Well, there are certain things that could be could be better. I can't decide, of course, whether the music is right for you or not, as I mentioned. It might be fine for you and it might be rubbish for me. But there are certain things that you know, could do with some improvement, I think. And hopefully uh, the guys at Tune Pocket will see this video and maybe they might even comment or they might even make some changes as a result of it. Firstly, the search facility. Now, I don't want to go on about this too much because I know from contact with Tune Pocket that they are working on this as a number one priority at the moment. It's just a massive list down the sidebar. You can search by quite a few things, quite a few genres, quite a few instrument types, but the way it's implemented is pretty poor. It's You have your main content on the, on the screen and then down the sidebar, there's just this enormous search that you just need to scroll down. All, and then the left side of the site is just white space. There could be some additional things added to the search categories. So production genre will be a good one, maybe root, notes of tracks, maybe keys of tracks would be nice as well. It'd be nice to know if a, if a track was in C minor before you download it, or you know, just knowing that information and being able to search by that information would be useful to me. I was also going to comment on the fact that there's no search option around tempo and duration, but I have noticed over the last couple of days that they've added that. So they're clearly working on this and uh, hopefully we'll see some more improvements in the future. Secondly, the audio watermark. It definitely works and it's incredibly irritating. It's extremely loud. This is the watermark that plays over the track. So if you're not, oh, actually I say this so if you're not signed up, when you preview a track, there's a watermark that plays over the top of it so that you can't just sort of copy it onto your machine. It's very loud and very irritating. It needs to have a member's, if you're signed in, a member's section that allows you to preview tracks without that watermark because once you've previewed just about four or five songs, it just gets so irritating to hear that watermark again and again and again, and makes the whole previewing and searching for music quite cumbersome, which for a site that is all about searching for music and finding the right song to go with your production seems kind of counterintuitive. You'd want that to be a good experience. So that watermark really should be handled a little bit better in my opinion. There's no monthly subscription. I was quite surprised to see that actually. So I contacted uh, Tune Pocket and asked them about this one. And it really is a simple case of uh, people signing up for a monthly subscription. And because their catalog is fairly modest at this time, downloading the entire catalog, canceling, and well, what do they have out of that? It's just not, it's just not sustainable. I'm sure there are people out there thinking, well, what's wrong with that? You know, if I sign up, I can download what I want. Well, that's, you know, that's not the reality, is it? It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. They cannot sustain their business in that way. And that does make sense. So what they, rather than putting quotas, which would be the only other option for them, they've decided to can, or they've decided not to go with a monthly subscription. The pricing's fair, it's $99 a year. You're not shelling out a huge amount of money anyway. Uh, and the, therefore the um, commitment is required to, for an annual subscription. For some reason, a download has to be a zip containing both the MP3 and the WAV. I can see that MP3 should be an option, but I'd like to bet that many people want and need only the WAV file, so I'd like to see an option to just download the WAV directly to my desktop. Previews are too big, I don't mean data-wise, I'm talking physical size on the site. It's nice to have the waveform to see the dynamics of the song, but each offering takes up way too much real estate. Be nice to see these smaller, allowing more to be seen on screen. And there's also currently a pagination limit of 10 files per page. Thinking about the comments from support, however, this could be related to ripping content from the site, but it does hamper previewing of the material. It'd be nice if this was 20 or 30 songs. So in summary then, well, I think firstly, it's worth considering, do you actually need a subscription like this? Do you, do, you need, do you even need a service like this? Well, or are you just suffering from what I like to refer to as native instruments complete ultimate syndrome? And what I mean by that is, well, native instruments complete ultimate offers you everything. It offers you everything you can possibly want 
uh, as far as uh, your music making is concerned. But in reality, how much do you actually use? Having access to a huge audio library of tracks is great, but how many will you actually use? I, for many of my videos, I stick to the same music. If I'm doing something different, which is, you know, maybe, I don't know, what, four or five projects a year, I, for the same price of the subscription, I could just buy those tracks from something like Audio Network, and I would be getting tracks that I knew were perfect for that particular project uh, without any compromise. I wouldn't just be selecting from a library that I know I can download for free, or free subscription. So you sort of think, well, is, is there a need for it? But let's assume there is, because otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So if I temporarily, temporarily switch this video to an, an audio blocks versus tune pocket sort of uh, uh, race, tune pocket would win hands down. Uh, it's $50 cheaper. It doesn't offer itself up as, as anything that it's not. It's very clear and simple in the sign up process. There's no sort of crazy offers that, uh, that, that, that ridicule the value of the product by offering it at stupid percentages, 90% off or something silly like that, and then pushing it up to a crazy price the year after. It's, it's much, much more transparent in the way it works. It's tagged much, much better. The tracks themselves are tagged so much better. You could actually find things. If I search for rock on audio blocks, I'll probably get a rock track. And then the next thing will be some ukulele track because somebody wants to promote it there and has badly tagged it. It may only be a thousand tracks or so at the moment, but hopefully they will continue adding to it. They will continue developing the site and refining the features. And I think if they stay along the line of being strict on tagging, it's gonna be a service definitely worth looking at for $99 a year. Thank you for watching. I just wanna make it quite clear that I'm not paid. I have not been paid by TunePocket in any way to make this video. Uh, I took a look at their service and wanted to do a review of it. Thank you for uh, thank you to their support team for responding to my questions pretty quickly and thank you again for watching and please subscribe if you do enjoy the channel thanks bye bye